And there we are with the second game. That is not looking like Team Islands because Team Islands would be having a row there. But, oh, well, that's a bit of a surprise, Normal Islands. That's something I wouldn't expect all that much. I would be really expecting Team Islands, but Normal Islands. All right, let's see how that's going to be working out. Because, yeah, that's going to be, of course, Triple Vikings right now by the opponents. Various Gauchos who are on the home map didn't take them, which is a surprise because I would be expecting that they... They will be the ones actually taking the Triple Vikings in here since it's their home map. Well, uh, that just doesn't make all that much of a sense, their choice, but maybe they are having some kind of plan like early landing. At this point, I'm kind of thinking that's gonna be the plan. Or some kind of tower rush. We have already seen a tower rush on islands this season. It was played before. It was fun. <laughs> it didn't work out, but it was definitely fun. So maybe it's gonna be a rare. Could definitely happen. Could definitely happen around here. As uh, so we are waiting for the pause, that was the reason. Or of course delay in there in the start and we might in the meantime just basically check what's gonna be happening around the corners what the fishies are gonna be like and such so this corner at the bottom seems to be quite fine not really that much of a problem in here at all but the one at the top is not that huge you can see there are a few deep fish here and there but overall plenty of emptiness as well yeah there's like absolutely nothing in most of this screen this is definitely not that great not get not that great at all but it seems to be basically like one of the few things that's going wrong with the map potentially this one could be difficult as well but i'm expecting that exodo will be produ producing a dog a bit more into the forefront or if he does into the back then it's probably gonna be somewhere here and he does have enough issues at this position so yeah he should be fairly safe and fairly okay he's also on the flank so maybe just gonna be supporting that he should be on the flank side and going for basically some forward dock as you will be expecting just basically the pocket player to be coming for the back build and whatnot stream ended so are they like restarting or where are they actually going to do what's actually going on what was in the chat written i don't understand unfortunately spanish Hmm, so maybe they're just gonna be like restarting or whatever. Yeah, it seems like so let's let's try to see what's actually happening and what went on. Hmm. It seems like that actually Gauchos called for it. I don't exactly see any kind of problem so far. It's kinda weird. But it seems that basically NHNs agreed, so in that case, yeah, well, not much really of a problem if they want to do it. If they want to help their opponents, why not? Definitely nice fair play. So, yeah, I don't really see any kind of reason for this. Oh, the gold. Yeah, this is probably going to be it. Hmm? Yeah, that's going to be this gold. This is going to be the reason, which is definitely sucky. Even though he does have the second one and he could be cutting through to that. Yeah, well, he didn't have to call right? He would have survived with this gold. But, yeah, I can understand. This is gonna be this gold. Okay, let's go out then. Okay, so here we are gonna be heading into the second game. For the second time. And that's gonna be islands yet again, as we're gonna be, of course, having the same civilization, Stripper Vikings for NHNs. For the opponents, it's gonna be fairly standard build-up of of Hans, Vikings and Samurais, aka Japanese of course, and that is gonna be resulting into some kind of change here or not. Exodo is pretty much at the same spot. Or... Am I seeing this right or was it Restore? Have I just misread the game room? Yeah, it was actually Restore. Okay, so he's not really all that unhappy, unhappy about the goal, so it's... Anybody's guess what actually happened. Anybody's guess why they actually went for it, not entirely certain. Because it didn't seem like that anybody dropped or whatnot, so it seems maybe some kind of technical glitch with the game or whatnot. Not really certain, but anyway, we're gonna be continuing exactly with the game that we left with. And it's gonna be decided in full, which means of course that we're gonna be also seeing Exodo dealing with this quite tricky gold. He will have to somehow cut around it. Got around it to actually get there, and that means potentially a bit of issue for him, but I'm having slight, ever so slight feeling that this gold might be just basically enough 
for deciding the game because looking at some kind of plan by Gauchos, there definitely should be a plan. It might be basically over a bit sooner because I'm really expecting some kind of landing by them. I really do. I think they have maybe even mentioned that in the chat in the first part of the game as we are looking at the front dog by Tukan. He is of course right now on the flank so as a Viking that's of course making plenty of sense to be quite aggressive and well 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 not that many fishies here. Just look at this screen around the dock and you can see one shore fish, two shore fish, three, four, five. So five shore fish and we're done. And we're absolutely done. There are no deep fish here. Absolutely no deep fish. <laughs> the closest deep fish are, <laughs> oh man, are always all the way there. Oh, this is not great. He can survive this with the shore fish, but this is really pretty bad for him. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the problems that can happen if you actually build up into the middle and into the channels between you and your opponents, which you cannot really know. You don't know how it's gonna be spawned the map because, of course, you cannot scout, scout on the water before. You're having a devotee in there, as the villager is definitely risking in there, but he shouldn't be losing her. Or, right now... Uh-huh, one extra hit. Yeah, well, he did catch her. I think he actually did catch her with the last hit in there. So she's gonna be a bit more susceptible to potentially radiant. And this is an interesting position of the TC, because it's very close to the water. So if they somehow manage to not really control it all that much, this TC is gonna be a liability. Most definitely. So Tukan is kind of getting set up for <laughs> not an easy game number two. It's probably going to be a bit difficult for him yet again. Otherwise, he's having plenty of hunt in a good position. But, oh well, maybe he could have waited a bit more and be a bit more patient because this is <laughs> one hell of an inefficiency in there. Uh, but still, he's having good gold. It's going to be fairly protected. This top one, fairly not that much in Imperial Age, but in Imperial Age, kind of who cares at that point. It's going to be a whole lot more about other things. But this gold is really calm. Ca Kinda okay, so not really that much of a problem. On the right flank, we are looking at the corner, of course, being quite full of the fishies as opposed to what Tukan is having. So Cloud, yet again, in the pocket position, gonna be booming his ass off, so that's gonna be quite fine for him. Should be expecting fast castle from that player, as on the left flank, that's gonna be under Viking, of course, with a triple X, with Sobek already having also a front dog, but he's having a much, much better position than actually what Tukan is having. Yeah. <laughs> Dukan is really drawing the shortest straw in this in this match overall, not just this game. Even the first game wasn't all that great for him. Uh, so we're gonna be of course right now seeing that mate is also in the front, but he is the Han. That's kinda expecting, and much more than that, it's expected because he is on the flank. As uh, so everybody's advancing into few lages, just Cloud is a bit slower. And who is missing? Somebody's missing. Green is missing. Pingu is missing. Ooh. Pingu is missing as a Viking, so that will be that that will be either fast castle or some kind of sling. Hmm, strange, strange. Let's wait what's gonna happen in there because you can see set up at the back. So Exorok quite quite afraid of what's going to happen. Set up at the back, second dog coming up. Green is having one dog. This is looking decidedly, decidedly interesting <laughs> at this point. Second dog right now from the hunt, third one also, so it seems like that he's gonna be at least fighting full on for the water. So mate versus Sobek, and it's gonna be interesting matchup in here. Second dog coming up, of course, for the blue player. As at the top side, well, Tukan, of course, gonna be a bit slower and having a bit harder economy. Yes, even Arvats are just 20 villages, you can see that Tukan was quite slow in there. And Tyronis, well, you would have to buy me a new computer. Yeah, I'm not I'm not streaming at 720p just because I won't. <laughs> it's because I can't do any better. <laughs> not everyone can cast at 1080p, unfortunately. So that's the reason for that. So sorry about that kind of quality, but hopefully the games are gonna be making up for that. As uh, so we are having to can go with player one, and that's basically telling to Cloud to what they're gonna be doing. And yeah, it's seeming like that actually Tukan is gonna be hoping. Or rather hoping, he's actually quite confident he's gonna be able to deal with Exodo. Exodo is the Japanese, so yeah, Japanese are not exactly the best on the flank. They are definitely the best in booming because of the better fishing economy and whatnot. He is coming forward, but is it gonna be anything all that major? I don't exactly think so, as against the Viking it's always gonna be a hard fight. Even through the very bad map for Tukan, you can see Tukan is picking up the 
of the <laughs> last position in his team. As we're looking at some first engagements at the bottom side. And that seems to be going right now for Sobek. Yeah, even though the few boats here, he was trying to disrupt the economic kill, at least one of the fishing boats. It's not gonna be anything all that major. And he does have reinforcements, but yeah, not that huge. Right now, Pingui advancing at 27 villages. Okay, so as you can, gonna be just basically jump into the castle, as expected. Third door coming up. It seems to be right now coming into a standard that you would be expecting. But we're just basically right now waiting for yellow to advance into Castle H a bit sooner with better economy and as a Viking. So yeah, already having a few boats on top of his opponent. So that seems to be really what will be deciding the game in the middle of the map. Okay, at the top, it seems that basically the idea of Exoro to somehow slow down Tukan has taken him back and he's gonna be returning to his home base. Just trying to basically protect the economy as much as he can. And I'm kind of thinking that maybe Exoro could be wanting to even jump into Castle H. Mm, I wouldn't discount that possibility. I really wouldn't discount that possibility that he doesn't really want to engage the opponents. Oh, careful guys, you're probably gonna die. He doesn't want to engage him in the fuel age all that much. So that's this. And of course, we are also looking at Pretty big problem right now, and maybe even at least flank deciding because losing <laughs> hunters and in those numbers, four hunters at this point, that's absolutely brutal. And even though he is producing plenty of boats to somehow make up for that, it's not really good enough. Not really good enough in there. And yeah, just basically confirming that Tukan is gonna be having a good game against Exoro. And so far, unfortunately, I don't see any kind of landing at all. So that doesn't seem to be the plan for Gauchos, which just kind of confirms that I'm slightly confused. Why they pick this map? Doesn't make really that much of a sense. I was kind of hoping that they would be having some kind of other plan, but yeah, well, apparently not. And they just want to have some fun on the water. And they kind of figure that if their opponents are picking Arabia and they are not exactly known as islands players or kind of water players, then they could be having some kind of chance in there. Might be possible. You can see the first castle is going to be coming up for Pingui, as even Cloud is not really hurrying up in the castle, surprisingly. You can see he's definitely not here in there, getting the market right now, thinking about it at least. But it's fairly surprising that basically all three, all three NHNs went for the Galley Rush, more or less, even though for even though for Cloud it was, it was slightly slower, so it wasn't really that huge. That huge as far as the speed goes, you can see that even Mate is kind of able to deal with that. Deal with the double so far, that's definitely well played by him. But unfortunately, same cannot be said at the top for Exoro, who is just waiting for... Yeah, the first engagements with the Viking are right next to his docks, and it seems that even though he's gonna be fighting right next to his military base, it might just not be enough in the long run, as the reinforcements are already on their way for Lutukan. And if this is gonna be played carefully, then of course this is gonna be a fairly easy fight for the purple player because of basically just having the higher numbers. But you also mustn't forget that Pingu has just advanced into the castle age. He's already getting the war galleys. Does he have some kind of army yet? Not really, he just basically started. And here we go, quite a lot of salt and bought by Exodo <laughs> and Pingui. So the economies are kinda all over the place for the players. Not really good news, but it's gonna be helping them in basically overcoming some kind of issues that they are having so far. And in the meantime, of course, the castle has been clicked by Exodo, interestingly enough, and by Cloud as well though. So Cloud is gonna be probably yet again the most deciding player in the game. And it's gonna be really, really on his shoulders if NHNs are gonna be able to finish with the game in time. Because of course we are looking at army from Pingui. This is the reason why I wasn't seeing enough army here. Because he already sent it to his ally on the left. Okay, so that makes plenty of sense. As he's moving forward with the numbers by red, it seems well enough going. But with Sobek advancing into Castle H and so far red not yet. Let's switch into mate. Hmm, kinda looking at it already. 700, he's definitely close by in the range and in the vicinity it's looking quite promising for of course right now yellow with blue as they are having the numbers and they're just basically gonna be waiting for the correct technologies to be coming into play in the meantime there's gonna be a bit of an engagement in the middle from which Lutukan is forced to retreat as he really cannot fight against all the army from Exoro and from Pingui as well especially with the technological advantage in there and the ballistics right now coming up in here where the castle ages here yeah, being played basically by absolutely everyone and we are still having quite a good fight in there. So even though you could be maybe thinking that the triple Vikings could be 
Well, it's kind of it's some kind of idea between players that Triple Vikings is actually instaving on the water. And you can see it's absolutely not true. It's absolutely not true. And you still need to play very well. And the reason for that is, of course, because you are missing team bonuses from the other players. And it's basically just one trick pony. And if that trick, you cannot execute it properly and it doesn't work, then you're in pretty deep trouble. Because you don't have anything else to do. <laughs> you just don't. And which is why it's a pretty good idea. Once your opponents are going uh, triple Vikings and you are kind of surprised by it, to actually try early landing. That's something that, for example, New Chapter learned about two seasons ago. They reacted very well in... It was some kind of playoff match, I'm thinking, if I remember correctly. Where they basically faced uh, Triple Vikings. They were having just normal civilizations, standard civilizations like Gaucha in here. And it worked very well for them. They were able to overcome the opponents through quite clever play in here. Astukan is gonna be losing economy. Well, not really, really just yet. The same as Exodor did lose them. He's right now at 37. Which is not really that huge, but Sobeka 36 is not huge, not huge either. And looking at all the boats, all the boats from green, this is very interesting to see. Because you'll be expecting that maybe Cloud would be controlling the water, so basically trying to counter that double. But he is in the meantime trying to double on the left side, but... You can see that mate waiting for the war is in the corner of the map, literally. <laughs> With a bit of assistance by Pingui is not really killed. He hasn't lost the water yet, and this is so far played quite nicely by Gaucho. And interestingly enough, NHNs are having quite significant troubles somehow closing the game, or not really closing the game, even getting even in the vicinity of closing the game. This game is definitely open, very much open, and most anything can happen. And right now this DC being close to the water is gonna be a liability, exactly as we said at the start of the game. And yeah, let's see how Chili Pingo is gonna be able to somehow take care of that. He's already preparing himself a bit, maybe expecting a bit of landing somewhere. As Tukan is gonna be coming from the back. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a surprise. As those numbers are not really equal to those, most definitely aren't. As well, in the meantime, though, Exodo is gonna be slowing down the economy of Cloud. And can he have some villages to kill? Not those. Not those either, potentially a bit later. But oh well, here he could. And he could be even blocking double stone. Well, that's actually pretty important. Stone is really rising. Really rising in importance as or rather the longer the island's game goes. So that might be playing game or rather playing a role in the game to come quite significantly so right now of course Exodo needs to retreat because this is not really good not really good as Cloud needs to hmm yeah the, he was asking what's actually going on he wasn't sure but yeah of course right now Tukan is against two but right now with all the boats being in all kinds of corners of the universe and of the waters it's looking like that actually yellow will be having enough time to retreat yeah, he's already sending a few boats back and this is gonna be a game making engagement it seems and this is one that gauchos shouldn't be taken they don't have the numbers here and they are fighting next to opponents dogs so the reinforcements are gonna be so much faster this is a bad fight they need to run they need to run as fast as possible yeah yeah just run just run 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 because otherwise you wouldn't be able to withstand that kind of pressure as so apparently pingui is gonna be switching into front with the dogs that's definitely something that needs to happen that needs to happen quite desperately or is he switching yeah, this villager from the bottom is coming there. That will be important to basically help control the middle of the map and well also to supply boats wherever he wants. As mate is so far doing a very good job against Sobek. Very good job indeed. Sobek is having quite significant issues against him, especially with the little reinforcements by Pingui. So that's very well played by Gauchos and they so far are playing quite competently. Quite competently indeed, as Cloud is right now hurting apparently. <laughs> Yeah, oh, everybody's hurting. Oh man, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. And <laughs> but at the same time, it's looking quite promising in that case for Exodo, as he's having a few boats that he could be sending forward. But he needs to somehow deal with the problem in that because Tukan has produced plenty, plenty of dogs, but he feels that he's kind of behind, which seems to be basically the sentiment for Cloud as well. But looking at all of those boats, right now arriving at the battle. Oh! This is a bad battle for Sobek, this is actually a disastrous battle. I'm not entirely certain why he was taking it, because he's definitely losing. And right now this is gonna be turning into potentially a huge issue for any chance. Because right now, Blue is, Blue is gone. And even though he's gonna be producing a few boats right next to the battlefield, 
This is gonna be allowing actually red with teal and a few green to basically deal with the huge armada of Tukan. And Tukan is gonna be left with what he has right next to his dogs, which is not huge. And Exodo is probably gonna be able to deal with that himself. With Pingui especially coming into Imperial Age. Oh man. So this is looking like suddenly a pretty good choice. A pretty good choice, of course, by <laughs> Gauchos as the home map. Making plenty of sense as they are working their way ever so slowly into some kind of lead. Which is at this point kind of undisputed. You can see they are even on the score leading by rather 500 points. And this Imperial Age, this Imperial Age, and especially coming the second one by Exoro, that is huge. That is absolutely huge because you can see the opponents are nowhere near. Cloud, absolutely nowhere near advance. Dukan, absolutely nowhere. Sobek, absolutely nowhere. He's the most closest, but he's still like in another room. Not really close by the Imperial Age at, at all. And this could be basically a game winning moment, moment right now for Gauchos, if they can use it properly. Because the Galleons right now come in there, he had the GG coming in with the Imperial Age. Mm -hmm. He's definitely recognizing that, he, that they don't have any kind of push for that Imperial Age themselves. And that power spike on the water is everything. That definitely is. Tukan is at least trying to keep the battle alive at the top, but with Exodo producing so many boats and even keeping some idols in there by Pingui. It's not looking how bad for him. And looking, for example, at the economies, the reason for... The reason actually why Gauchos are so much ahead is actually not economy. You can see the echo is slightly better for any chance. Cloud is at 72 boats, or rather, not boats, villages. At 72 villages, 57 so back, Tukan is 55, whereas the opponents are 54, 52 and 63, so the economies are better for any chance, ever so slightly. So this is basically just down to sheer skill on water. Sheer skill for water, for any chance, and for, of course, Gauchos, a whole lot better in here. So it's almost looking like the GG's is gonna be call, and Tukan is not wanting, not want, don't want to call the, <laughs> the GG yet. He wants to keep fighting, but after this battle, I'm thinking, yeah, it's gonna be call, because this is not a good one for him. So Beck is gonna be coming in Imperial Age just about now to kind of swell. But with Mate as the third one, basically all Gauchos are gonna be in Imperial Age before the opponents in such a huge timing. And oh, <laughs> yeah, goodbye this army. Goodbye. Goodbye to Khan and Cloud. You're gonna be losing absolutely everything. Well, that was a nice maneuver. Very nice maneuver by Gaucho Beat. This is gonna be giving them even more of an advantage. With the Galeons coming up for Exoro, he's gonna be controlling the top as well. I don't exactly doubt that all that much is already advancing forward into the position of the dogs. And they are gonna be right now calling the GG's in here. It seems they are quite impatient on that. And yeah, <laughs> Dukan right now recognizing that it's gonna be a GG and we're gonna be seeing a decider. So as I said in the first game, let's wait for home map of Gaucho. And it should be a whole lot different game. And it actually was. And you can see Triple Vikings, not even that could save the new Hell Hunters. Not even Triple Vikings are an insta win, so everybody, know that in your notepads and whatnot. Triple Vikings is not an insta win on water. It definitely isn't, and it's proven time and again in RTS League that Triple Civilizations are not as strong as they are made out to be by some players. Well, skill can definitely prevail, and it did prevail in here, and Gauchos are tying the match at 1-1, and it's gonna be up to Decider on Blind Random to decide who advance into the quarterfinals between the new Hell Hunters and Gaucho B. Let's check. Oh, well, let's right now have a look at the top. Just basically had a confirmation that Purple would be having some kind of fight there, but not really against the Galeons and Bracer. That was a whole lot faster than for to count. Okay, achievements coming up. And it's gonna be Pingui from the pocket position, but overall has to be said, very well played by all Gauchos, by all Gauchos overall, I especially liked Mate at the bottom. Mate was doing such a great job keeping Sobek and also partly Cloud in control that I'm really thinking that Mate was the most important player of Gaucho and most instrumental to the victory. Well done, well done and some good maneuvers. That's all it takes to win. Well, what else? <laughs> what else? Apparently it seems like we might be having some kind of replacements. I'm just gonna be right now coming out. So GG. 